A tree grows in New York. Oh, Carl, it comes to New York. Hello. <laughs> I was working at um, uh, Manhattan Fruitier back around about, what, 95, 96 or so. And uh, that, right, well, one of those years, about 96, what, you know, 97, uh, that was a year when cotton, dried cotton became an element of centerpiece design for the best tables, okay? And uh, I was just, I thought that was the most insane thing that I had ever seen, that cotton was being used for that. And, uh, but I was fascinated by the way it looked, so I uh, got close to it, and I grabbed some of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I pilfered it. And uh, I thought I'd grow some. Oh, yeah, that's tobacco. That's the other big one. Well, at least we don't wear tobacco. I would come to home every summer uh, as a at, when I a working summer after when I was 13 years old, 14 years old, to come buy school clothes. You know, so I could go back to school, dap, you know, hooked up, you know, have my, you know, have my thing together, you know, after I worked, made my forty dollars a week, you know, picking tobacco, you know. Yeah, they have they have shade grown tobacco in Connecticut, and you can work in agriculture at fourteen years of age, and at the time they were paying a dollar ten cent an hour, minus the taxes, you drew a forty dollar a week paycheck. You're 13, 14 years old, 15. Any muscles I have right now, I, it could be contributed to the fact that you worked in tobacco. And that's what everybody did. Sports people, jocks, everybody did that. College kids did that. They got a little bit more money. And it was like being at summer camp, but you pick the tobacco, sing the songs around the campfire at night. You know what I mean? You know, live in that communal, go on a panty raid or two. This is in the 1960s, so it was a kinder, kinder, gentler nation then. You could go on a panty raid or two. It was okay. You know, go over and spoon with the girl that, that worked on the, uh, you know, the rigor girls. You know, they would hang the tobacco, do, you know, and, and sew it together. The girls would do that. The boys, and then the boys would hang the tobacco and pick the tobacco and make sure that it got to its place. And, and it, little kids like us, we would pick the tobacco. People notice because a lot of people moved to New York to get away from cotton. And here comes cotton following them. But it's it's just hot climate thing. You know, it's got, it's like somebody told me from Alabama today. They were from Alabama, they were from uh, the Gulf Coast. They told me when they left there yesterday, uh, it was 90 degrees and muggy right there on the, on the Gulf Coast in Alabama where they grow a lot of cotton. And that's where you want to grow this thing. This thing right now, I'm hitting it with sunlight during the day, but it's not as warm as this cotton would like. It would like it to be 90 degrees. What's that? It's cotton. Oh, you're talking, oh, because we're following the cotton around. Have you ever, oh, wait a minute, you guys are, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, man, you didn't do anything that bad, did you? That's it, right? Oh, man. We are not just teachers or people that they see every day as a routine. We are like mothers and fathers to these children. So how can we explain to them that we need to go on strike to get more money. They will not understand that. They need stability, they need safety, and they need love. And that's what we provide. So my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, may God bless you, and let's keep it together, and let's get what we want, because we deserve it, and we deserve the, all the respect. God bless. Tanya Middleton, came all the way for Staten Island. This is a teacher. 
out there in the daycare center that keeps up the good fight. I remember her mouth and that meeting that y'all had. <laughs> You seen this before? No, I just heard about it. Like that. Touch it. Follow me. Follow me. See the seeds? It is really popping too. Well, you I'm can. I'm gonna take it to the base. Where you get this from? Here, you can get some and grow them. Where you you know, we come to the opening one of those nights or one Where of those days. One? Yeah, it just come and then That's you can get get downtown. some seeds and you can grow they, them as a project. They can mail. You can mail this and get this. Well, you no, go you gotta got to go there. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So like I grow this. <laughs> what is that? Oh, wow. I know um, uh, I mean, what did you get it from? I grew it. You grew it. So I you grew brought it. it to show people? Yeah, exactly. Why don't you give me this one? No, I need this one right now. This one's a star. <laughs> this one's a star. Henry Adams, historian, descendant of uh, John Adams, John Quincy Adams. And he writes, backward as these states in some respects were, they possessed one new element of wealth which promised more for them than anything Virginia could hope. And Virginia did tobacco. The steam engines of Watt had been applied in England to spinning, weaving, and printing cotton. An immense demand had risen for that staple and the cotton gin had been simultaneously invented. A sudden impetus was given to industry. Land which had been worthless and estates which had become bankrupt acquired new value. And in 1800, every planter was growing cotton, buying Negroes, and breaking fresh soil. Scientists have found, and archaeologists, historians have found that it goes all the way back 7,000 years. It didn't become a big, as big an element of clothing until the development of the cotton gin. After eight, uh, 1791, Eli Whitney comes up with the cotton gin. This is the bowl right here, the green. You see that? That's a bowl. That's a bowl. That's going to open up, and that is going to reveal the lint, which is the white part, OK? The white, furry, fuzzy part. Inside the lint, you have seed. When that lint is separated from that seed, it leaves little tiny horrors on that seed. And those little tiny horrors are called linters. Once those linters are removed, they also become valuable. And that didn't happen until years afterwards. They had to refine the uh, uh, ginning process. Right? The cotton gin, the cotton engine, the cotton gin, right? But they refined that machine to be able to get those little tiny horrors off there. And they used those to make everything from smokeless gunpowder to lacquer. To, uh, and then the seeds are crushed to make oils. And you can find those cottonseed oils in your favorite brand of potato chips or your not-so-favorite brand of potato chips. <laughs>